you are into gardening and who isn't in one form or another, you need to come to Evergreen Home and Garden Showplace. We are here on Riverport Road in Kingsport. They've also got one in Colonial Heights, Moreland Drive. Here with Karen Gibson, our gardening expert. Hello. So today we're talking vegetables. Vegetables. It's vegetable time in Tennessee. So uh, uh, I guess some people have the luxury of having a huge garden right. area, but right. some don't. And right. they can do a raised garden. That's correct. And some don't. Right. Or they live in a condo and they still want some fresh vegetables. Exactly. And that's why we turn to all of this stuff today. Containers. Yes, container gardening today. Basically, like you said, not everyone has a big garden flat that was, has your natural soil that they can actually go out and plant a garden in. And then they think, well, I'm not going to garden. I'm just going to go to the farmer's market. I'm going to go to the grocery store or whatever. But you need to be able to have at least one tomato plant. Yes, at, least at least one tomato plant. So you can walk out and pick that tomato that have that uh, tomato sandwich. I love it. I do too. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about vegetables. Then we're okay. going to move on and talk about the container gardening and things like that. All right. Uh, we, we actually, the biggest thing, the biggest craze is going to be tomatoes. Right. And there is two different types of tomatoes. There is a determinate tomato and there is a indeterminate tomato. I've never heard this. Okay. Determinate tomato is a tomato that gets about four feet tall. It puts its fruit on all at one time. It ripens all at one time, and then it's done. It's done. It's done. Then you have indeterminate, which, and that one will grow about, the determinants grow about four feet tall. Okay. So if you're doing patio garden, perfect. Perfect. Perfect to do that. Would you still you want to uh, put a, a crate around it? You can because sometimes they do get a little leggy yeah. and they'll fall over. So what you want to do with this one is you may want to stagger your tomatoes, like plant and then maybe two to three weeks later plant another one. Ah, so you have more awesome. tomatoes coming in at different times. Good deal. Okay, and then the indeterminate, actually it grows anywhere from six to ten feet tall. It's like, it's called a vining tomato and it sets fruit all season and it ripens all season, of course. So you've got fruit going through the hole up until frost. And you can use a cage on those, but it's better if you've got somewhere where you yes got some ropes that can yeah, climb. Exactly. If you, uh, my husband actually takes fencing and builds air cages, and then he cuts out holes so he can stick his hand in there. And he, then he actually has to take tomato stakes to stake that down into ground because they do get so heavy that they'll fall over. And we'll give they you her be. husband's number later yeah. so he can come to My it. husband does all the gardening at our house. Well, vegetable gardening. You're the supervisor. Yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, with a tomato plant, and I've had them that, that got big, can you pinch it off at some point or you, is that going to hurt? You do. You actually should sucker the vining tomatoes. You right. should sucker those. And this is a young tomato, so I don't see right in here. You can probably see that little one. That little bitty one right there. Yeah. What you do is you actually pop those off. Okay. And you can, when they get to be big, you can actually use a knife or scissors or whatever. Right. And you cut that out so you don't have all these little uh, coming out of the bottom. Yeah, coming out. But once it gets places. above my cage, can I start oh, pinching you, those you off? You can actually cut it back at any time if you want to. So if I was you always want to stop it, to. no. Because what happens, and you can let the suckers grow then if you want to, and that way they'll just keep growing out okay. versus up. Okay. All right. Okay. And then we've got the different types of peppers. Uh, you've got oolins and oolins of peppers nowadays. We've got from um, just your basic green peppers. Mm -hmm. We have your red, red bell peppers. And then we have the great hot pepper, oh, yeah. which is our everybody's ghost into pepper. Now. Yeah, everybody's into the, the hot peppers. My husband, I don't think there's a hot pepper in the world that he will not eat. And he just constantly has to have peppers every day of the week. Well, they have that festival downtown. Yes. We'll, we'll take him there. Yes, he needs we'll to go. We'll set him on fire. Yes. So, uh, t all right, let's talk about peppers for a second. I've been told that the red and yellow peppers are ripe green peppers. Exactly. So, exactly. So, if you buy a green pepper plant, Will they they'll turn or will they always you stay green? this one right here? This says King Arthur. It's yeah. a red pepper. So when it sets on there, it's going to be green, but you let it go to red, red. Okay. or to orange. You you actually can buy the pepper mm -hmm. that we'll and see, see the color, color on the packaging, and you will know that that's going to be your red peppers or your orange peppers. But the pepper. orange ones are popular in this area. Exactly. Aren't they? Very <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. And then we get into our lettuces thing about lettuces, my customers, when they come in, lettuce, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbages, they always say, well, I just don't want to plant very many because they all come in at one time. 
Well, you don't have to plant them all at one time. Come in, get you four, you get need. you eight, whatever you want. Plant those, come in two weeks later, get you another cell, four, four pack, whatever, and plant those. So they're gonna always be staggered. It's so simple, but something I never thought of. Yes, just really, really simple. And herbs, herbs are so big. Uh, people are just getting into herbs big time, not not only for medicinal, but to eat also. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> we've got, we're gonna actually plant a little uh, Italian pot today. Okay. And it's gonna be, we've got some uh, chives, we've got some basil, we've got some oregano, and we've got some flat leaf parsley. So Fat you could plant them in one of these you, or, or a big pot like that. That's, that's correct. But today we're gonna do we're going to do this a little. This is kind of new and hip, yeah. isn't it? This is, yeah. This is our little burlap bags, and we've got those for herbs, potatoes, eggplant, tomatoes. Huh. We have one that's got that's for designed for tomatoes that actually comes with the cage also. So that that is fabulous. Um, now, getting back to the fact of not everyone has a garden nice. flat, or they don't have raised beds, and like I said, we can do a container garden. Container gardening is a big hit because it doesn't take up much space. So any kind of container you want to use, all I ever recommend is for tomatoes, make sure you give it a good root system. So therefore you're going to need a big container oh, okay. to put that in. Okay? And, and for vegetables, it should be one that, that has drainage? You need to have drainage because okay. nothing worse than having those feet to right. get in there and get wet <laughs> and, and stay wet. And, I grow these in my in my yard. <laughs> oh, yeah. you're talking about wild onions. Oh, okay. This is chives. <laughs> Two different things. Uh, garden chives are fabulous. You can put those on baked potatoes, and they're always a good top dressing for a lot of different things. Uh, basil. Who doesn't like sweet basil? Mm -hmm. uh, sweet basil is just fabulous. Get you slice you up a tomato. Get you a little bit of mozzarella. Put you a little bit of <laughs> olive oil on top of that, and then balsamic vinegar, and then a leaf of uh, basil. Nice. Put that on your grill or in your oven. Mm. Go down to that Abing olive oil and get some of that good exactly, olive oil. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And flat leaf parsley. Flat leaf parsley actually has a little bit better flavor than your curly parsley. Curly parsley, have you ever notice when they serve you your dinner, they'll have a little bit of uh, curly par mm -hmm. parsley on there? That's to get rid of the bad breath if you eat onions. Really? You can chew on a little bit of curly leaf parsley. Well, now I know what I'm going to give people away. for summer. <laughs> I got a list of them. Okay, so these you would put in here mm -hmm. and leave maybe two, three inches of uh, uh, dirt down right. from the top yes, yes. and plant them. Uh -huh. and, uh, do you leave them full sun? Uh, these will actually take full sun. There's a few few herbs that will take a little bit of shade, but most of them are going to take full sun. Okay, and okay. Just, just leave them out, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And okay. nothing, nothing better than to go out and clip all of that and then make you a fresh pizza also. Shirley Johnson says hi guys. Hi, hello Shirley. I want to come live in your house. All right, now I tried to grow potatoes one year and they came out like grapes. And I was told it was because I planted them in red clay. Okay. So this like I said, is a tater. This is a tater bag. Yeah. And basically is all it is is a burlap bag. They've lined it with a little bit of plastic in there, but they've got a drainage area down in the bottom. Right. We filled it with a little bit of soil. And what I did last night to prep is I took some potatoes, which is seed potatoes, and I actually cut them in fours. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know how they go back together, but anyway, I cut them last night. And it's, it's not always a test. it's always important. You don't have to, but it's always important really to let them scab over. So okay. if you cut them the night before you're going to plant them, they have time to heal over, and that just keeps them from rotting too quick huh. before they start growing. Okay. So you always want to have what they call eyes. Eyes. Eyes okay. on your potatoes so they can see the way up. <laughs> this, this one's got 20-20 vision. Look yeah, at that one. exactly. <laughs> and so you always want to put those down in the soil. Just like that right there. Put that one right there. Okay. Now what this is, like I said, this is container garden. Now, a lot of people think potatoes in containers, you would be surprised what will come out of this. Uh, what you're going to do now is you're actually going to take soil and you're going to cover the top of that. He's really going to do it. If you want me to. Okay. Mm. And uh, when you're going to cover that. And as your plant sprouts, which puts their leaves on, once they start growing, when they get about four to five inches tall, you're going to add a little bit of soil to cover those up, leave the top leaves sticking out. Okay. As they grow, continue to add soil until this is completely full. 
Okay. Okay. You're going to let them die back naturally, the potatoes, the, the plants. The plant. You're going to let that plant die back naturally. And after they die back naturally, you'll be surprised. You can actually take this and turn this over and you will have potatoes like you would not believe. So once the green plant dies, then mm -hmm. you know the potatoes are ready. The potatoes are ready because once the plant dies, the potato can't grow anymore. Okay. All righty. Now let's look at some of our, our goodies then. Okay. All right, we, we've, we've talked, we talked about, about the plants. About the burlap. Okay. And the gardening earth boxes are a big rage nowadays. Um, they make su such easy gardening. I mean, this gives you a, a guide of different things that you can plant in this size of a, a earth box. Mm -hmm. And gardening in that is just fabulous. I mean, especially if you have, you live in an apartment or anything like that. So do that. you just put dirt over that rack? You you do. Well, you actually, there's some components down in the mm -hmm. bottom. It's got your fertilizer and all that stuff that okay. comes with it. You buy this, you buy a two cubic foot bag of potting soil, and you put uh, pour all that in there and plant your plants. You and you got to place a water reservoir to water, and it turns out fabulous. Unbelievable. Okay. What, what, what? What, did we miss these? We did. Those are right there. Let's show you. One thing we need to do is learn how to plant an onion. Okay. I have so many people that come in that don't even know how to plant onions, and that is unbelievable this day and time. Well, you're standing right next to me. This right here is actually what we call garden plants. And this is an onion that has already sprouted, okay? And this is what you're going to get, the big Valdea onions mm -hmm. that you get at the grocery store, Texas Super Sweets or what have you. That's what these are. Okay, so what you're going to do when you plant those, we're going to pretend that this is a garden flat too. Okay. So what we're going to do is just dig us a little trench, and you would do this in your garden, you would do this in a raised bed, you would do this in a container. Okay, you're going to insert that down in the ground, and you're going to pull soil around it. You're going to leave that part sticking up. Okay. okay? And you're just going to do your row all the way out through there. Allow about two inches in between. Right. each plant because remember they're going to expand they're going to get to be large uh, onions now when they start to grow you start seeing green up here onions you have to pull the soil away from the tops of them just the very top very top so the sun hits the top of the onion and it causes that onion to expand so you get those big hamburger onions okay things you don't know oh, yeah. Now, what and about then, these little rests? These are the ones that we call scallions. Mm -hmm. You know, that you uh, like to put in on your salad bar or whatever. Dig you a trench. You don't even really have to dig a trench. You just sort of lay those down in there and do that right there. Okay. That, it's as simple as that. And you don't have to space these too far apart because you're going to be pulling them before they get much size. Oh, Cover okay. them up. Little bit of water. Don't have to have a lot of water. Only thing I recommend to fertilize those with is some ammonia sulfate. That is pure nitrogen, and onions don't like a lot of fertilized. They're really typically all they want is nitrogen. Okay. okay? Also, when it comes to gardening, you want to actually always use some uh, nutrients for your plants. We have uh, some 10 10 10, we have some 6 12 12. That's your typical, what we call farmer uh, fertilizers. Back in the 50s, we used Rin 10 10. Remember? <laughs> A lot of people come in and ask for ammonia nitrate, and you know, ammonia nitrate now has been sort of been taken off the market. Bombs. Yes. Uh, so, triple 10, 6, 12, 12, great uh, fertilizers. In the container here, I actually have a garden tone. I always recommend garden tone or bloom coat if you're going to be planting in containers. Uh, garden tone is a organic fertilizer, uh, poultry based, so it's not going to burn your plants, okay? Uh, good potting soil, if you're going to be doing containers, make sure you use a good grade of potting soil. Don't go out and dig dirt out of the ground because it's going to go compact so tightly that it does not do your vegetables good. And, and there's potting soil and there's dirt, there's several different ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have potting soil for containers, okay. potting mix for containers. Uh, make sure you get a good container mix. with your native soil okay. and that actually breaks up some of that clay, slate, so and what happens. So your tomatoes don't turn out like that. So your right. tomatoes turn, don't turn out like grapes. Asparagus. Asparagus is a big grape. Everybody loves asparagus. thing about asparagus, you plant it the first year, you let it just grow, enjoy the ferns that grows on top of it. The next year you can harvest. You quit harvesting it in June from now on. 
and you uh, let it start growing after June, just to burn out, that just multiplies. We've got bags of corn, bags of beans, nothing better than going out and getting fresh corn and beans and having, and, and potatoes also, and having a good meal. Good stuff. Yeah. All right. Now you think, is there going to be a quiz on this? No. But if you're like me, that was a lot of information in a short amount of time. But the good thing is you come to Evergreen and all these folks you see walking around with a little Evergreen shirt on, they can help you. And they can tell you, hey, this is what I want to do. What do I need? Right. And I just love it here for that reason, if none other. And when you're here, if you're here at the Riverport stuff store, make sure you ask for Karen and get her autograph. But you guys have a big show, uh, big sale going on right now? We do. We actually are having our, uh, what we call our flower and garden show. Mr. and Mrs. Volk started this years ago when they went into business, and they actually started out selling tomato plants. I think, now I can't remember, I think for 10, maybe less than nine, uh, 10 cents, like maybe nine cents, I can't remember. But you know, inflation over the years, <laughs> they're 22 cents now, so you can come in, buy 22 cent tomatoes, 22 cent peppers, we've got 88 cent uh, marigolds, uh, good, good, good products. And then of course, a big array of plants, it's time to get that blooming outside. Yep, and uh, we're going to be covering a lot of, the, we've got the trees over there eventually we'll mm -hmm. get to, and uh -huh. shrubs. Uh, everybody loved last week where yeah. we planted the shrub, and yeah. uh, we, we won't tease you with any other things, but every Wednesday, and if you can't be here with us live, you can watch it anytime after that. So if you dig gardening, come to Evergreen Home and Garden Showplace in Kingsport and in Colonial Heights.